Good morning, everyone. Myself, Dr. Ankita. I am a second year resident from Maharishi Madhvadeshwar University. Today's topic for my paper presentation is MRI in port spine. Is it a necessity? Aims and objectives. The purpose of this study is to evaluate the role of MRI as an investigative modality in tuberculosis of spine or to document its value in early diagnosis and management. Either it is the role of MRI in determining the extent of spinal TB, which is compared to plain radiography. Studying the MR appearances of TB spine encountered in a hospital. Introduction. Tuberculosis is increasing in the developing countries and re-emerging in the developed ones. Tuberculosis of spine is an infection which is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis involving one or more components of the spine, namely the vertebra, intervertebral disc, paraspinal soft tissues, and epidural space. It is the most clinically important form of extra pulmonary TB as it may produce serious neurological sequelae due to compression of spinal cord. Early recognition and prompt treatment are therefore necessary to minimize residual spinal deformity or permanent neurological deficit. This retrospective study highlights and correlates the image morphology of spinal TB on X-ray and MRI both. Materials and methods. The study was done on patients 30, which was diagnosed with TB of spine. The diagnosis was established on the basis of at least one of the following criteria, which are histological evidence of caseating granulomas or culture of acid fast bacilli or satisfactory therapeutic response to chemotherapy in patients with clinical or radiological evidence of spinal TB. Plain radiographs and MRI of spine were carried out in all the patients. MRI was done using 1.5 Tesla Philips system and the images were T1-weighted, T2-weighted, STIR, and post-contrast gadolinium T1-weighted sequences with sections in sedital, coronal, and axial planes. Results. In study of 30 patients, the results were evaluated as per following parameters, which were clinical features, vertebral level, type of vertebral lesion, comparison of X-ray and MRI finding. According to clinical features, the maximum number of patients presented with back pain, which was followed by fever, spinal deformity, paraparesis, and bowel bladder involvement, vertebral level. Out of all the patients, it was observed that dorsos lumbar vertebra were the most affected ones and sacral were the least ones. Types of vertebral lesion, this maximum number of lesions involved the central portion of the vertebra. Comparison between the plain radiograph and MRI findings in this study concluded that level of involvement was more at dorsolumbar vertebral, which was the central type of lesion, and also the IV disc involvement in abscesses were found, which were maximum, that is seen in 20 number of patients, and bone destruction was also common, in out of which wedging was the most important one. Discussion. Pain radiograph features, the spread of infection is typically described as subligamentous, that is beneath the anterior longitudinal ligament, usually sparing the posterior elements or involving at the multiple levels. It is seen with irregularity of anterior superior end plate due to subligamentous extension. There may be some irregularity of anterior vertebral margins. This is a classic appearance of TB spondylitis. As with other extra pulmonary TB, the chest will may be unrevealing or no pulmonary lesion such as seen in up to 50% of cases with the source being a primary lung lesion that is clinically silent. MRI features are vertebral body end plate involvements appear as heterogeneously enhancing end plate irregularity on post-contrast sequences, hypo-intense on T1-weighted and hyper-intense on T2-weighted images. Marrow edema also appeared as hypo-intense, hyper-intense areas on T2-weighted and STIR images. Intervertebral disc involvement appears hypo-intense on T1-weighted and hyper-intense on T2-weighted images and shows heterogeneous enhancement on post-contrast T1-weighted images. Pre-vertebral, paravertebral, and psoas abscesses also appeared as heterogeneous lesion with peripheral enhancement and central non-enhancement hypo-intense areas. Now the case reports. The case one is a, are the images of a 44-year-old male which showed Hypo-intense signal at the level of L3 vertebral body on T1-weighted SAG and core sections. Similarly, the same lesions appeared as hyper-intense on T2-weighted images. However, there was no evidence of pre- or paravertebral abscess. In case 2, images of a 75-year-old female patient were taken, which showed hypo-intense lesions involving D9 and D10 vertebra on T1-weighted and hyper-intense on T2-weighted images. Also, the post-contrast T1 shows enhancing margins of bony erosions with enhancing granulation tissue. 
These are the images of 10 year old male showing erosions of T10, T11 vertebral body with wedging in this space obliterated at the level of T10, 11 vertebra. Pre vertebral and bilateral paravertebral spaces, that is, the abscesses, were involved. Post contrast T1 weighted images show enhancement of margins of the abscess and also of margins of area of erosion of the vertebral bodies. The, another case four showed the images of 11 years old female who presented with kyphoskeliotic deformity involving L1 and L2 vertebral. Hypo intense areas in L1 and L2 vertebral bodies on T1 weighted images, which appeared as hyper intense on T2 weighted. Pre vertebral and paravertebral abscess were also involved. Case 5 are the images of 13 years old female, which showed large pre vertebral collection, that is, abscess. Hyperintense areas in C1, C2, C3 vertebral bodies, which were suggestive of erosion, and there was no evidence of spinal cord involvement. The case six are the images of 28 years old male, which showed hypointense signal, that is, areas on the T1 weighted images involving D10 and D11 vertebral body, with reduction of this space with pre and para vertebral abscess. Post contrast studies show enhancement of wall of abscess and of margins of bony erosions. Outcome. Now, the outcome of study is that it showed that the most common clinical feature is back pain, followed by deformity, with most patients being afebrile. Most co common vertebral level which was involved is dorsal that, and was followed by lumbar and the cervical with the sacral being the least involved. Central type of vertebral lesion is common, then paradiscal and rarely it involves the posterior elements. On comparing both the modalities, bone destruction is equally assessed, whereas soft tissue involvement, extent of lesion, type of lesion, and IV disc involvement are better visualized on MRI. So, is MRI a necessity? Conclusion, the MRI offers excellent visualization of the bone, soft tissue components of spinal TB, and helps to identify disease at distant asymptomatic sites. Also, these images clearly demonstrate the extent of soft tissue involvement and its effect to the theca, cord, or foramen. It helps in early diagnosis and therefore management. Thank you.